I just wanted to point out uh, as your panels get curvier, if you have some very curvy um, seams, you may want to just pin one half and sew that and then go back and pin the other half and sew that down and that might be easier than trying to move this panel and uh, mess up while you're sewing when it goes around the curve. So right now I, I'm working on a very curvy um, panel and I sewed both the top and this bottom section separately in order to um, make it easier to sew but now I want to do the folded edge part and it's hard because when you straighten out this panel that's supposed to be straight this side um, will, won't sit straight but if you just fold this over like that it's just going to be weirdly wrinkled so it is best to just notch it in a couple areas and um, also well, so let, well, let me just do it and then I'll say it sorry about the noise in the background that's my rats they're drinking water so you can notch it right there and it sits okay um, if you want you can notch it maybe once more or something but it's sitting pretty well right here Eh, I might notch it one more but then I just notch this well I don't notch this I just clip this one and I actually just fold each one separately and sew that separately from each other um, you might think this might not make the corset very strong but believe me there's going to be plenty of seams in this corset especially when you put um, the boning channel over this once again so I think it'll work really well I already did the other side of this corset and it seems to be fine so once you have all the pieces together you can take the boning channel pattern piece and make a few more um, you will be folding the pieces and ironing them so that they are 7 eighths of an inch across and then you will be sewing them down like an external boning channel over the top of the part where the little flaps meet. Uh, not on the inside, but this side. And I'm just going to match up the top and sew a line straight down the middle to um, make a double boning channel so then you just sew on each side of that as well so you will have t room for two bones so here is the double boning channel I just sewed um, I have a flat bone that I'm just putting in here I made sure that both sides fit I did just eyeball this um, to make the middle part first so the middle uh, line and then I edge stitched uh, both sides and luckily the bone does fit on both sides but if you aren't careful you might have to pick a few seams before you get it right so that's why I like practicing on mock-ups as well if you have some tips for me actually I would love to hear them in the comments since I've only done external boning channels once before or for a, one other corset so here is a look at how I'm lining up the boning channel um, I'm just placing it over the channel and if you measured um, your width correctly of this um, external channel it will fit right over the lines. I'm sorry it's unfolding I only have one hand available. And then to sew just down the middle I see that it's even on both sides as I go. So if the stitching lines underneath are not showing and it's even on both sides as you sew down the middle it should turn out um, pretty well and if you edge stitch um, as close as you can to the edge without rolling off it should go uh, fit perfectly as well um, another tip is as you sew these channels on the uh, outer parts it doesn't matter for the in part um, make sure to pull the fabric away um, so that it doesn't actually bunch up underneath and then you'd have to pick it out and it'd be no fun 
Another tip I have for making the external boning channels is to use um, the cotton twill or a heavier material like the one that you are using to make the mock-up. I um, This is the other half of the course of the, or the mock-up that I already made and I did two uh, channels with um, with a muslin and it was so thin that it just wasn't working. Uh, my lines got all wonky and eh, I wouldn't suggest it. And also some of my other practice ones didn't come out right, but that's why we practice these things. So our next step is to um, sew the uh, front and back panels. I accidentally sewed this panel on backwards, which was isn't a big deal because it's just the grommet panel. Um, so the fold line is on the wrong side. So I normally would fold it to the outside um, where the external channels are, but it doesn't really matter that much. So all you have to do is um, pre-iron your seam allowance, and then you will fold it to the seam line that is there, and then you just edge, edge, edge stitch. Sorry, just like you edge stitched these, and then you will um, sew your two channels to make uh, room for the grommet. For the grommet panel, I used the bone and a zipper foot to um, measure the channel. So I just put this in the fabric and then I used the zipper foot to sew right next to it so the channel would be perfect. And then I realized this is from the other side that I already had made. I already knew um, once I sewed this that this panel was way too big. I'm going to fix that when I do the mock-up uh, adjustment video but I can take off some extra space here because I definitely don't need as much space for grommets. I have basically room for two for an extra boning channel or two here. So um, I'm going to fix that. And also when I was just sewing this one, um, the thread got stuck in the machine and caused the tension to get all weird and messed up. So that's just something that can happen. Next, I will be showing you how to insert the busk uh, we'll do the loop side first. Uh, make sure you have the correct panel that will be the loop side. You take your loops and I'm going to put it right next to um, this seam right here and I don't want to put it on top of the seam for uh, this technique because it will be wobbly so I'm going to put it next to it and I'm going to make sure that it's um, even from the top and the bottom. I'm going to just trace a line against it around the busk loops like so. And you have that pattern. We have our extra um, busk panel flap here. We're going to put it underneath and then you're going to sew um, just on the lines, skipping over the loop part, so you can um, backstitch at the end of each, at the beginning and end of each line. So that will leave room for the loops to come through. So this is what it looks like. Um, I did not cut my threads as I went. I just picked it up, moved it, and kept doing um, the backstitching at the top and bottom of each row. I will not be cutting these threads because if I cut them, they might end up poking out later while I'm wearing the corset, so I just never bother cutting them. So next you will open and uh, press the seam, which I pre-did, and then you will press the seam allowance on this side, so when we fold it over, it will cover that seam. So I already the loops in to make sure that they fit and I realize that they actually do not they do fit in the loops but they don't fit snugly next to here and that probably has something to just do with the way um, the bulk of the metal is like I don't really know but anyways I'm gonna fold this over and I will actually 
use a zipper foot to sew against the um, metal and then I probably will have to sew one more time to make sure that this covers all of the seam lines. So now you have the busk in and when I was edge stitch stitching I did run off the um, edge so I may have to practice some more on that or possibly even change the um, length of the channel here so that I could fit a support bone in here. It's almost wide enough for a support bone. Um, but I'll think about that after I do the um, mock-up altering or fitting video. So next you want to do um, the pin side. So you just sew a straight seam to put the two panels together. Um, you can pre-iron everything. You just simply fold this over where it's going to sit and you line up the top and bottom edges of the loops. Make sure they are even and then you take your pencil and simply mark where the busk pins are going to go and you want to make sure to put them the dots in at the edges of the loops here and not at the, the base of the loop because that is where the pin is going to sit and then you just need to have an awl and to make holes in the garment and put one pin in through each hole at a time. Okay, so I have the pin side sewn together and I noticed after sewing it that the pin side is actually not as wide as the loop side for some reason. I never noticed that with other busks before. I don't even know if that's normal, but um, that actually left room for more um, seam allowance here and so I actually do have room on the side for a, um, a supporting bone if I want, like an extra boning channel, but I'm going to have to figure this all out when I um, do the actual corset, I guess. Anyway, um, when I was sewing this using my zipper foot, I actually couldn't tell very well where the um, how to follow along next to the bone because of this raised um, section here, the seam. So I actually ran into the bone and broke the... Uh, needle which oh it's right here broken needle that's why you use um, safety glasses whenever you're sewing over metal like that so that's unfortunate but it's just something that happens and the more I practice hopefully the better I get all right I completed the mock-up um, the last few things I did was sew a little seam on the bottom so I could put some bones in the casings and they wouldn't fall through the bottom. Um, I put holes in the back, uh, just simple grommet holes without the grommets in it so I could lace it up. So I used some flat steel bones, I put a few um, spiral steel bones in the casings and some other flat ones I had lying around. So I'm um, the next thing to do is to try it on and then I'll make a video about um, how to adjust the pattern. So thanks for watching.